Welcome to worship. While tomorrow we may join in the reverie of Thanksgiving for the bounties of the earth, tonight we join with our Native American siblings and neighbors for whom our Thanksgiving is an annual observance of genocide, displacement and occupation, a national day of mourning. It's hard to be Americans and followers of Jesus at the same time. Our prayer tonight is that we will always be mindful of justice and peace listening to the ancient and not so ancient words of prophets and proclaimers about what is right and what is possible. We gather as seekers of reconciliation and peace. Welcome to worship at Woodside. Whoever you are, we say, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's begin our worship. A reading, maybe unrelated or maybe not. Fatima Ashgar, a South Asian poet, wrote about being an orphan, a casualty of colonialism in India and Pakistan. Her parents died when she was a child and she has spent her adulthood coming to terms with conquest and white supremacy. She wrote of her parents and so many others. I didn't know I needed to worry about them until they were gone. Her experience had nothing to do with Thanksgiving, with Native Americans, with our founding stories. But it is a painful reminder that the world keeps turning in its paternalistic ways, as white people presume to know what is best for all the people of the earth, all people of color, the people of the global majority. We gather to acknowledge that the hideous cost of conquest continues. A reading, The Sacred Hoop. Black Elk wrote, Then I was standing on the highest mountain of them all, and round about beneath me was the whole hoop of the world. And while I stood there, I saw beneath more than I can tell. And while I stood there, I saw more than I can tell and I understood more than I saw. For I was seeing in a sacred manner the shapes of all things in the spirit. And the shape of all shapes as they must live together like one being. And I saw the sacred hoop of my people was one of many hoops that made one circle. Wide as daylight and as starlight. And in the center grew one mighty flowering tree to shelter all the children of one mother and one father. And I saw that it was holy. So we went to all the powers when we were young. At that time, children could not dance only people over 50 years of age could dance. Most people do not know this, that the government forbid children to dance Indian. And that was so they could wipe out the culture of the young people. And then finally, the new generation would never know what happened, never know what happened. Hey, 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 hey,
My relation. My relation. Let go of your fears. For now is the time to take courage. My relation, look. For this is a beautiful life. Beauty is everywhere. You are here today, my relation. And nothing, nothing is more beautiful than that. Let us pray. Gracious God, known to us in many ways and many languages, we gather in thanksgiving and also in repentance. Centuries ago, this land was the home of peaceful tribes coexisting in love of you and care of creation. In arrogance and ignorance, white ancestors landed on the shores, claimed the land as their right and your blessing, and then slaughtered the ones who were here first. We white descendants cannot say what we might have done, but we recognize that we are beneficiaries of that conquest, reaping the joys and privileges of land and labor that would not have belonged to us. Be with us this night. Let your spirit wash over us and make us new. Give us wisdom to find ways to be peacemakers, reconcilers, community builders, and good neighbors. Teach us to make whole what has been broken. Teach us to love. Amen. Eternal Spirit of the living Christ, I know not how to ask or what to say. I only know my need as deep as life, and only you can teach me how to pray. Pray in me the prayer I need this day. Help me to see your purpose and your will. Where I have failed, what I have done amiss. Held in forgiving love, let me be still. the strength I lack, bring vision clear. Oh, human need, oh, give my eyes to see. Fulfillment of my life in love outpoured, my life in you, oh, Christ, your love in me. A bit of history. Having migrated perhaps 25,000 years ago from Asia across the land bridge of the Bering Straits, widely dispersed over the great landmass of the Americas, they numbered approximately 75 million people by the time Columbus came, perhaps 25 million in North America. 
responding to the different environments of soil and climate. They developed hundreds of different tribal cultures, perhaps 2,000 different languages. They perfected the art of agriculture and figured out how to grow corn, which cannot grow by itself and must be planted, cultivated, fertilized, harvested, huxed, and shelled. They ingeniously developed a variety of other vegetables and fruits, as well as peanuts and chocolate and tobacco and rubber. On their own, the Indians were engaged in the great agricultural revolutions of, that other people in Asia, Europe, Africa were going through about the same time. While many of the tribes remained nomadic hunters and food gatherers and wandering, egalitarian communes, others began to live in more settled communities where there was more food, larger populations, more divisions of labor among men and women, more leisure time for artistic and social work, for building houses. About a thousand years before Christ, the Zuni and Hopi Indians of what is now New Mexico had begun to build villages con consisting of large terrace buildings nestled in among cliffs and mountains for protection from enemies with hundreds of rooms in each village. Before the arrival of the European explorers, they were using irrigation canals, dams, were doing ceramics, weaving baskets, making cloth, out of cotton. They were people without a written language, but with their own laws. Their poetry, their history kept in memory and passed on in an oral vocabulary more complex than Europe's. Accompanied by song, dance, and ceremonial drama, they paid careful attention to the development of personality intensity of will, independence, and flexibility, passion and poignancy to their partnership with one another and with nature. This was the vision of Hiawatha, chief of the Mohawks. We bind ourselves together by taking hold of each other's hands so firmly and forming a circle so strong that if a tree should fall upon it, it could not shake nor break it, so that our people and grandchildren shall remain in the circle in security, peace, and happiness. And white people killed them. And white people killed them. And white people killed them. And white people killed them, calling themselves peaceful settlers, seekers of religious freedom, hungry pilgrims, White people killed them. Spanish conquistadors. English congregationalists. Portuguese mercenaries. Gold hunters. Kidnappers. Enslavers. Occupiers. Pretenders who feigned friendship to annihilate a people. They did this in the name of God. In the name of Christ. By the authority of the church. They called it Manifest Destiny. Rooted in a 15th century document called the Doctrine of Discovery. Which American courts still cite in cases involving land rights. White people claimed God was on their side. White people still claim God is on their side. Displacement, genocide. White supremacy, colonialism. Boarding schools, reservations, broken treaties. Here and elsewhere, by our money and power, the harm goes on. History books so full of lies when no word is spoken of why the Indian died, or that the Latinos love the California land. Do I 
books all say it was discovered by one white man. Well, that's a lie, just a lie, one of the many, and we've had plenty. I don't want more of the same, no more genocide in my name. Nazi forces grow again, ignorance gives them a place. Plan is teaching children to hate the human race. Where once there was a playground, now an MX missile plan. Do they think it's fun to see just how much we can stand? Well, that's a lie. Same God and gun will provide Myanmar, Afghanistan, Haiti, and Darfur, and many more. It's a crime, do we think the fascist right will save the world in time? They try to tell us so, but we've got to tell them no. A, a reading from Joy Harjo, Native American and U.S. Poet Laureate, from Exile of Memory. Do not return. We were warned by one who knows things. You will only upset the dead. They will emerge from the spiral of little houses lined up in the furrows of Morrow and walk the land. There will be no place in memory for what they see the highways, the houses, the stores of interlopers, perched over their blood fields where the dead last stood. And then what? You with your words in the enemy's language, do you know how to make a peaceful road through human memory? And what of angry ghosts of history? Then what? Don't look back. 
In Sunday school, we were told Lot's wife turned back and turned to salt, but her family wasn't leaving paradise. We loved our waters and trees and the creatures and earths and skies in that beloved place. Those beings were our companions, even as they fed us, cared for us. If I turn to salt, it will be of petrified tears from the footsteps of my relatives as they walked west. We mourn the treachery of our founders. We reject the arrogance of our national myths. We acknowledge with horror and shame the reality of our evil American past. We commit to a vision of peace and well-being. Can there be more? Can there be something else? There is a vision from Isaiah. There will be a day when God will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, food rich and succulent and fine aged wines. On that day, God will remove the mourning veil covering all peoples, the shroud covering all nations. God will thus destroy all death forever. God will wipe away the tears from every cheek and will take away the shame of God's people on earth, wherever they live. This is the day for which we hope and give thanks, but it is not yet, and there is much to repent, much work to do. Let us pray. Spirit of the earth, we are not the people we might have been had we not conquered a land and killed its people. As we gather with family and friends to celebrate the joys of life, let us be ever mindful of the past, the truth of genocide and displacement, the lies of heroism. Teach us that national pride is insufficient and dangerous, that American exceptionalism is deadly and holds no promise. Help us to build a world of equity, a humble people sustained by love of neighbor. Teach us to love, amen. And now in preparation for our gatherings and celebrations tomorrow, I offer you this litany, a table grace for Thanksgiving. Let us pray. God, who created the world and invited us to be caretakers, we give you thanks for all that is, for seas and sky, for forests and mountains, for shooting stars and whitewater rapids, for cities and open spaces. You have created habitat for all and provided all that we need to thrive. In our arrogance and ignorance, we have made a mess. The seas are rising, the ice caps are melting, the rainforests are disappearing, the sky is falling and capitalism continues its assault on the world's water supply. Yet we dare still ask your blessing. Bless us, O oh God. Bless us with imagination, with clarity, with devotion to creation. Bless us with righteous indignation, with energy, with desire for a better world. Make our bodies strong, fill our minds with your visions and pour your spirit into our spirits. As we prepare for a day of national thanksgiving, remind us that we share the earth, even with creatures we cannot see, creatures vitally important to the balance you once established. Teach us to care about that which we cannot see. It is always true that the food before us is prepared by workers least likely to enjoy a day off, those who labor in fields and processing plants, in slaughterhouses and retail outlets, 
in prep kitchens and dish rooms teach us to care about those we may not know. Our consumption always comes at a cost. We repent for the lives of animals raised in misery, slaughtered in terror. Free us to free them from the misery and terror. Teach us to live lives in honor of others. As we gather with family or friends, keep us mindful of those for whom place is elusive. Open our hearts to those shunned by family, those without home or welcome, those without country. Teach us hospitality. As much of our nation turns towards celebration, we know our Native American neighbors grieve the land, the lives and cultures we have stolen. Help us to see our destructive ways and turn to a way of life. Teach us to repent. Fill us, O oh God, with humility and grace that we may be caring neighbors around the world, partners in creating the kind of world that is possible. Bless us, God. Bless our gatherings. Bless our meals. Make us your people again. Amen. And now for our benediction, we call on God to be with us through this night and bless us in the morning, perhaps in ways that we had not imagined and could not conceive. God bless us and keep us. God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. God, look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen.